I went on a trip and came back to, let's see, that. And it's not water from rain. I don't know what it is. So, I think I have a new little project for the EJ-1. So I am finally back in the garage with the Civic. Can't wait to put the Integra seats in, but unfortunately, the radiator is leaking. So it's time to replace it. I picked up this one from DNA Motoring on eBay. So let's get to it. Here I am under the front of the car on the driver's side below the radiator and it looks like there's evidence of it leaking well before I noticed it so it's just been kind of pulling up underneath the radiator so I need to loosen this to start draining it so it's draining but I'm going to go up top and Open the cap so it drains a little quicker. If you can hear that, it's really flowing now. So while that's happening, I'm gonna go up top and start disconnecting stuff. Replacing the radiator is a pretty simple job. So now I just have to take off the upper radiator hose. Disconnect the tube going to the overflow. Since the hose clamp for the lower radiator hose isn't oriented in a favorable position for removal, I am going to follow it up here and disconnect it right there. After I disconnected the lower radiator hose from the thermostat housing, I then removed the guides that hold the hose in place. And then I took off the upper radiator bracket. And then I pulled out the overflow reservoir. There is this connector for the radiator fan that needs to come off. You just squeeze it and it comes right up. So you squeeze this part here. So then all I had to do to free the radiator was pull the lower radiator hose off of the thermostat housing and then I could take it out. So now it's time to open the new one and compare it to the old one to make sure it's the right one. Well, so far it looks good. So now I'm gonna take off the radiator fan and see if it bolts right up. And that looks like a perfect match. All the holes seem to line up perfectly. I swapped the fan over to the new radiator and it went exactly as it should. It fit fine. But when I went to transfer the hose, that's when I noticed the first difference. The radiator inlets on the new radiator were slightly larger than the original one. You're still able to get it on, but it took a bit more convincing. I also made sure that the head of the screw for the hose clamp pointed down so the next time I have to remove the radiator hose, it'll be easier to access.
I almost forgot. I want to take these little rubber parts off the old one and put them on the new one because the new one does not, does not come with them. And these are a bit messed up, so I'm going to order some new ones. But for now, these are going to go back on. And they have been on there for a long time. You can either put them on the radiator first or position them on the car where the radiator sits first. Tonight, I'm gonna to put them on the car first. Yeah, so these posts here line up with the grommets we just put in. I did have to get under the car to align the radiator, but after that, I was ready to connect all the hoses and the fan connector. The existing tube that came from the overflow tank to the radiator was a little loose on the radiator side connection, so I had to hunt for a new hose clamp for it. Luckily, I had a bin of parts with a hose clamp that would work. Maybe it could be a little tighter, but that, that's gonna have to work. Yeah, I think that'll work. All right, so now, fill her up. Ooh, see, I almost forgot to connect the, the hose to the thermostat housing. I've purchased quite a few radiators over the years. Some of them were expensive and directly from the manufacturer, and others were off of eBay. And I've had pretty good luck with all of them. But it does make me feel better when I see that hundreds or thousands are sold on eBay, and the reviews are all good. So that's why I was okay with this one. Well, I don't think I have enough coolant. Let me see. Well, I have some other coolant, and if I trust the label, it says I can mix it with anything, so I am going to roll with it. And I always keep some distilled water on hand. It's now time for me to bleed the system. So I have the radiator topped off with coolant, I have the funnel sitting in it, and if you don't have one of the fancy funnels that connects to the radiator so that the overflow doesn't spill out, you know, have something to catch it. I have paper towels here. And I like to keep a, a clear tube on hand for when I crack the, the bleeder nipple that is connected to the head. I have a 12 millimeter wrench on it such that when it's operating, I can crack it and watch the tube. Once the tube fills up with coolant and there's no bubbles in it, close it back up, the system is bled. So I'm going to turn the heat all the way to hot in the car, and let it idle, let the thermostat cycle a few times, and then come back, check it, check the level, top it off as needed, bleed it, and then I'm done. Well, almost done. And then I'll fill this to between the min and the max mark with coolant, and I'll call it good. You can see it bubbling up. And it's starting to come out of there, so I'm going to try and make sure I catch it. But um, it's doing what it should do. Yeah, so this happens as the, as the fluid expands as the engine heats up. So i got to let it go up and down a few times when the thermostat opens and closes. And then I'll crack that and bleed it, and I should be done. Now I clean that up, and luckily, I had some spillers, but not much. Just wipe it down, top this off, put some in the tank, check it in the morning, start up, check it again when I get to work, and I'll be good to go.
So I'm back under the car one final time before I go in for the night to see if I have any leaks. And none of the locations that were previously wet with the other one are wet now. Everything's dry. So I'm going to go check the tubes that I reconnected and I'm going to bed. I wasn't happy with how the old overflow hose was fitting. As you can see, it's taken on the shape of the barb and it's lost some of its elasticity. So on the way home, I picked up some new hose and when I slid it on, it was nice and tight. There were no surprises with this install and the build quality is surprisingly good. And since this is my primary vehicle, I'm gonna put a lot of miles on this radiator. If anything happens, I will document it on this channel. If you'd like to see the rest of the things I do to my EJ1 Civic, hit subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care.